Hey, First Assembly, this is Pastor Wes. I want to encourage you to get a seat, grab your Bible, and let's get into the Word of God. Hey, so good to be with you this evening. And again, thanks so much for joining us. If you're watching on Facebook, if you can take a second and hit like. If you're watching on YouTube, if you could subscribe and comment. Say hello. Let us know that you are there. Uh, we have been in a series on change and looking at how do we change in a way that we that it lasts. You know, what, what good does change make if it's only temporary? You know, change that we're wanting to establish, change that we're wanting to get in us so that it works in us is change that we want to last. And so I'm one that believes that good things are built. And so it is important that we understand that with our lives, we build bridges to the places that we go with each and every decision that we make. There is no beam me up situation. There is no, I was here and all of the sudden I'm here. Uh, I don't really believe in those kind of statements. I think all of us are on roads that simply take us places and that the way that we are living right now is moving us towards something. And so it's a big deal to say, am I headed the way I want to be headed? Is my life on the path that I want it to be on? And is it going the direction that I want it to go? Uh, I think it's important to ask ourselves these questions and to take time and look at the answers and not settle for the easy ones, but to dig down a little bit. I say this all the time, be a student of yourself because you have way more power than you realize in your life. And I think in a lot of times, in a lot of ways and cases, we are overpowered, uh, but under engaged in our own lives. Meaning this, we have power to do more than we're doing, but we're not engaging. Uh, and so our lives stay. Our lives can be stuck. All right. We can be so focused on going with the flow and just letting the current, you know, take us that we don't fully understand that we can live against the current. That it is OK to say, I'm not going there. I'm, I'm, I'm getting off of this road and I'm getting on a different one. You have that power because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And so having a goal. You mean, where are you going? Where are you headed? What, what is your life working towards? Having a goal, having a purpose, understanding who you are and why you're here, uh, I think is incredibly important because your goals and your purposes are what drive you. If you don't have a goal or you don't have a purpose, you're not driven. I think you're just drifting. Um, and so we can live our lives kind of like a, it's a, a sample pack. I don't really know who I am. I don't really know what I what I'm supposed to do 100 percent. So I'll just either do nothing waiting for that moment or I'll do a little bit of everything. And we end up a mile wide and an inch deep. But when we live that way, we don't really feel the depth of purpose and the depth of substance. So I understand that we learn by doing, but there has to be a little bit of grace in that. Um, but the thing is this, when I do what others are doing because they look happy, when I do what others are doing because they look like they have something that I want, uh, but when I do it, I discover I'm not really happier, uh, than I was before. You know, it's, 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 it's very unique the way life works. I know in my life personally that I have to understand my goal and my purpose and I find my joy in that. And it might be different than somebody else's. But when we try to have what others have because they look happy, I'm telling you, if you're not happy in your spirit and your soul, even if you obtain it, you're not going to feel better. You know, life can feel a little hopeless in that. And so what do we hope in? All right. Romans five says this. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ, our Lord, has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand. I love that. We have been brought into undeserved privilege. He says, we confidently and joyfully look forward to share God's glory. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials for we know that they help us develop endurance and endurance develops the strength of character and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. When we were utterly helpless, 
Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Our faith is so valuable. What you believe, and, and I'm not just saying what I say, but I'm saying what I believe, truly believe, because what you truly believe, you're going to live. You know, there's faith that people talk about, but then it's what we actually live is what I'm, I'm, I'm addressing here, okay? And spiritual maturity is when the faith that I talk is the same as the faith that I walk. And those things uh, become the same things. And, and I find that this peace, uh, because of what I have done, uh, not because of what I have done, but because of what Jesus has done for us. And it says this, we've been ushered into undeserved privilege that you in Christ are favored, that in Christ you're known and loved. And no matter where you go or where you walk, that is the case. That's why we can sit down at a table in the presence of our enemies. That's why he anoints our heads with oil. And I don't ever want to take that for granted. You know, I don't ever want to abuse that uh, or uh, in any way. Uh, I don't believe that this is a temporary thing. I think that when I am in Christ in my life, I have undeserved favor. I didn't earn it. I don't deserve it. But God's hand, when it is on you, it is on you. All right. And I believe that as a follower of Christ, his hand is on you uh, and we can live confident in that. God has brought us into that and that can give us joy. And because his hand is on us, even when trials or hardships come and Jesus said in this world, you will have trouble. There's nobody who skates through. God can take those things and develop in your life endurance. God grows the stick to itness in our lives. And that is how character grows. And it's reinforced by hope. And my hope in him, scripture says, won't disappoint. God will always be fully God. He is always sovereign. There is never a time that he is not God. And through salvation, my life has changed and it's continuing to become more and more like him. Now, God saves me and then he continues to save me from an old life and an old way of thinking as I grow in him. And so I'll never be disappointed in that because as long as I'm willing to learn and willing to grow, he will help me become more like him. And then he says, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit to fill your hearts with love. Uh, guys, this is massive. Uh, I think the Holy Spirit is simply one of the greatest gifts that you can receive because the Holy Spirit is always real time presence. It's not like something happens and you got to go track somebody down or try to get them on the phone to talk to them and know what to do. The Holy Spirit is with you each and every day. And so when I have real time presence in the moment, I can ask the Holy Spirit, what do I need to do? Holy Spirit, direct me in this. Holy Spirit, grant me wisdom. Holy Spirit, help me to know what the right thing is and then grant me the strength to do it. That's, that's real time, present time. And it says it fills our heart with love. And what does love do for you? But love, being truly loved, makes you feel safe. It makes you feel uh, brave. It makes you feel confident. Love makes you strong. Love makes us better. He fills us with his love. And so whenever we feel hopeless, God shows up at just the right time. You see, God is so good. Now, we took a little bit of time when we talked about what is discipline. Um, in our lives, because I think if we want to grow, discipline is a part of that. If we want to mature, discipline is a part of that. And I think disciplining ourselves, we often make such a negative thing because we feel like it's just a list of a bunch of things that I can't do. Uh, and, and that's never who wants to do that. Who wants to engage in it? But again, I think how we think about things impacts how we live things. And our lives are transformed by changing the way that we think. And so if discipline is choosing what I want most over what I want now, um, and if I said, I'll give you $20 now, uh, or I'll give you a hundred dollars in a month. Okay. Am I willing to sacrifice the immediate for something that's more valuable later? $20 is nice, but a hundred dollars is better. Hello. Don't you think so? All right. And so I'll adjust some things so that I can receive the greater thing later. That's discipline. 
The struggle is this, that we live in an instant gratification world and we want the greater now and I don't want to sacrifice for it. You know, I want the hundred now. I don't want to have to wait. That's the world we live in. And so no matter what area of life that we're talking about, our life, our marriage, our finances, our relationship with Jesus, we can schedule and structure our lives to grow towards the greater thing. Everything you do has a price. Everything you do, but there are choices that are made and you make them and I make them every day. Hebrews 12, 11 says this, no discipline is enjoyable while it's happening. It's painful, but afterwards there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. So listen, discipline can be painful at times, choosing the greater later, but I promise you that living undisciplined is painful as well. Saying no in the moment might be tough and it might be hard because we want to, but there's something greater. You know, my wife and I are, are, are working towards purchasing a home and, and you know what, there are things that come along with, Ooh, wouldn't it be nice to have, but we're saying no, because we want to take that money, put it towards a house and it will be down the road, but we're saving for the greater later, you know, and, and it's amazing. So saying no can be tough in the moment, but it's the right thing to obtain the greater thing. And so we will, in our lives, choose either the pain of discipline or the pain of regret because we tend to have one or the other. Either I'm going to struggle now so that I can obtain or I will get down the road and wish I had made the different choice and made the other choice. And so this is why I said I think we have to be students of ourselves. Uh, you know, what, what are the areas of your life that you are disciplined in? And we all have them. We have areas in your life right now, I promise you, that you're very disciplined in. Now, it may be a good thing or a bad thing. It may be benefiting your life or hurting your life, but you are just very routine and very set in your ways. Some choices are harder than others, but you can make good decisions and develop good habits to move your life to a better place. And so, what do you most need to do to have what you want the most? Uh, take a minute, think about that. What do I want the most and what do I need to start doing to move me in that direction? Stop talking about it. Develop a plan. Start working the plan. What is one thing you can do to move towards it? What's a decision that you can make tonight? All right. And then what do you need to stop doing to have what you want the most? Because if it was easy to obtain it, we would all have obtained it by now. And so usually there are things that stand in our way. What are they and how am I going to handle that? Are there different choices that I need to be making in my life to put me on a different path, to lead me to a different place? What's one step you could take to change the way you think about something so that you find freedom in it? Because that is a big part of health, physically, emotionally, spiritually, is learning how to start things and learning how to stop things. That's maturity. This is how we grow. There's a habit that I develop that's not benefiting my life, and so I need to figure out how to stop that and then develop a different habit that's going to put me on the right track to health that will benefit my life. Uh, and don't complicate it more than that. All right. So what are some habits you need to start? You say this, I, hey, I want to grow in my relationship with God. Well, okay. That's a great statement. It's a wonderful statement, but it's also a very general statement. What does that mean? In what ways are you talking about? Uh, how do you want to break that down? Okay, I want to start reading the Word every day. I'm going to spend time in prayer. Perfect. I want to get involved in a ministry or a small group. Okay, awesome. Again, kind of, kind of, kind of general. Let's break it down. Let's break it down. If you want to read your Bible every day and you have a habit of getting up every morning and going down and getting a cup of coffee and sitting in the living room drinking your coffee, put your Bible by the coffee maker. So when I get my cup of coffee, I'm going to take the Bible and while I'm drinking my coffee. I'm going to spend time in the Word. All right, put some feet on it, break it down to actionable steps and then begin to engage in the actionable steps. Now to do these things, to do that, there are some things I'm going to have to stop like this. I'm going to have to stop hitting the snooze button. You know, maybe some people are snooze button people. Some people aren't. I don't like the snooze. Uh, I, I'm, I'll admit every once in a while I use it. I don't like it. But there are some people that would hit snooze 10, 11, 12 times. You know, all right, what are you going to do? Put your, put your alarm clock across the room. Uh, set an alarm in, in a different place. It forces you to get out of bed. Make some decisions that engage the way that you live. Maybe another thing we have to stop doing is stop over planning your life. There are some things that I want to start, but you just don't have time. You don't have time. You're running here, running there. You're getting there, getting that. And, and there's so many things in your life that are happening that you don't have the space 
to do something new. And so you might have to walk away from some things that just steal your time and give that time to something that will build your life. All right. I want to get out of debt. Okay. Here's the thing. Get help. Get help. You know, we just finished financial peace. Get involved in a finance class. Get involved with something that's going to help you learn how scripturally to handle our money, how to develop budgets, how to live on budgets. Engage in these things. Learn about godly financing. What does it look like? Why do we do it? Where is it connected to the Word? Build that up in your life. Things to stop doing. I'm, I'm going to... Uh, <coughs> I'm going to, you know, stop using my credit card. And if there's something that I really want, I'm not going to binge spend. I'm not going to, I'm not going to have that, you know, window shopping. Oh, I have to have it. I'm going to wait several days before I buy something that I think I really, really want and see if I really, really need it. I'm going to pay cash for things. I'm going to stop making the minimum credit card payment. You know, there are things that you can do that will shift the way you think. You say, Pastor, I want to make friends. Okay. Habits to start. All right. Get a hobby. Start doing something that you can meet other people. Join a community group. Attend a Sunday school class. Get a small group. Habits to stop. Stop binge watching Netflix every weekend, all weekend. Stop playing video games in all your free time. Take control of your calendar back and make room for you to have opportunity to be involved in things that connect you with other people. All right. There are things to start and things to stop. He's pastor. I want to improve my marriage. All right. The first thing I would say do is pray together every day. Every day, pray together. Doesn't have to be long. Doesn't have to be huge. Grab each other's hands and ask the Lord to be with you today and bless you today. Set up and establish date nights. Hang around other married couples. Get into married small groups. All right, do some things that knit you together, things to stop doing. All right, stop blaming them for every problem you have in your life. Stop talking negatively about them to everybody who will listen outside of your circle. All right, there are things to start and things to stop. If you need counseling, get counseling. Be students of yourself, be students of your marriage, and engage. You see, we tend to make result statements. I want to lose 20 pounds, and then we get frustrated when when we're not there yet. But if I focus on the right habit, things become obtainable. Otherwise, that would be very challenging, meaning this. The habits or the training is always going to trump the trying. The Song of Solomon says, little foxes spoil the vine. And that's true. That is true. You can be all hyped up on something. Somebody can say something, do something, and just take all the air out of your sail. Just with a word, just with a sentence. We've all experienced this and been there. But if that's true, then the opposite of that is true as well. All right? Little things can build us. Little encouragements can build us. I can take a step towards freedom, and it's the disciplines of my life that help me choose whether I'm going to engage in the little foxes or the mustard seed grains of faith that will move mountains in my life. All right. And some things when you're in them and doing them don't look like they're radically changing. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like, uh, when you go and see someone who has a child that you haven't seen in a while, you know, you saw them last time they were barely walking and now you go back and they're running around and kicking balls and you're like, Oh my gosh, they've grown so much, but you have a different perspective than the person that was there every day. Because you don't always see the growth every day. Uh, And there are some things in your life that you're going to make right decisions and you're going to make right sacrifices and you're going to do the right thing that you're not going to see leaps and bounds. But all of a sudden you're going to look back and go, wow, I was there and now I'm here. Look how God has brought us. All right. So here's how you win. Here's how you win this, because I like winning. I hate losing. Uh, And it simply is this. You make doing the habit the win. So instead of saying, I want to lose 20 pounds, and the next day you get on the scale and you've gained a pound, instead of being frustrated all day, you make eating healthier, you make exercising, you make drinking your water the, 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 the win rather than the amount. And if you win enough days, you win the day. Okay, if I only focus on the end result, I'm going to feel like I'm failing a lot. But when you focus on the habit, you can win every day and eventually win the day. All right. Getting out of debt isn't easy. It can take some time, but you can do it. You don't need a $7 cup of coffee every day. There are 99 cent cups of coffee. Paying down the credit card. I get it. At first, it looks the same. You know, I paid a little extra. I paid a little extra. And it's just still big. It's still a lot. But bit by bit and moment by moment and day by day and check by check, you can win. 
And this applies to any aspect of your life. Marriage doesn't often change in a moment. But you can, by habits, by choices, set it on a different path that leads you to a different place. Relationally, spiritually, make doing the habit your win, and you can win every day. Uh, Ecclesiastes 7, 8 says, finishing is better than starting, and patience is better than pride. You know, it's not about where we start. It's about how we finish. All right. We don't get the results by focusing on the results. You get the results by focusing on the actions that get you the results. Um, And this is a big thing. So I I know what you're thinking. You're thinking every day, every day, every day. I want to lose 20 pounds. So every day, yeah, every day. Every day I'm going to eat well. Uh, Every day I'm going to drink my water. Every day I'm uh, going to stay away from the candy dish. You know, every day. Well, what if I stumble? What if I fall? Well, truth is sometimes we miss the mark. Uh, nobody is healthy. You might do great all week and then on Saturday night eat a whole pizza. All right. I don't suggest it. I don't suggest it, but not, all, you know, n- we're never going to be perfect. Uh, we're never going to be. But this is why the Apostle Paul talks so much about grace in his writings, because no one is perfect and we will never be. But habits are behaviors that we repeat consistently, not always something we do perfectly. All right. If you fall down, get up. All right. If you miss a moment, start again so we hit the next moment. All right. Be steady and keep moving forward. Listen, take a minute and write this out at home. All right. What is something that you want to accomplish? Question number one. Two, what is a habit that you can start to help you reach that? And then what is a habit you need to stop that's keeping you from that? You see, we learn by doing, and when I'm doing the right things, it's going to move me in the right direction. And when I move in the right direction consistently, not perfectly, but consistently, I'm going to end up in right places in my life. And that is a life of training. And training is always better than just trying. All right? Trying is kind of like hoping to be something I'm not. Training is getting better at what I am towards where I want to be. All right? Focus on the who, not the do. Focus on in Christ, I can do all things, and it's, it's choices that I make. Define what a win looks like, and then train your body. Don't just try in the moment to do the right thing. And some days we're going to run, and some days we're going to walk, but stay steady and stay moving, okay? Take some of the decisions in your mind. I want, I hope, I would love to, and put some feet on them and start, all right? So here's the joy of starting, is that this. Yesterday probably looked a lot like the day before. That looked a lot like the day before, meaning this. We all have our rhythms. We all have our routines. We all have times we get up, times we go to bed, and things we do at certain times in the day. And we kind of, all of our days can look very, very similar and very, very familiar. And, and we can just autopilot things. I don't know if you've ever, you know, come out of work and got in your car and you're just, you're, you're thinking about something or focused on something else. And you drive the whole way home and you kind of get home and you're like, oh, I'm home, you know. And you realize I wasn't conscious consciously looking at everything going on around me, that I've driven home the same place to the same place for so long, I just kind of autopiloted it. You know, I wasn't reckless. I just got here to there and it didn't require a lot of thought, okay? Um, There's this autopilot thing in our brain that kicks in and our lives can do this, uh, not just in that area, but in any area, meaning this, that we can wake up in the morning go through our day, go to bed at night, and have autopiloted a lot of stuff in our lives. Uh, A lot of what we do in a day is not the result of a conscious decision, uh, but rather habits that we have established and structured in our day. All right. Duke University did a study and they found this. I want to get the number right. 40% of the actions people take in any given day are the result not of a decision, but of habits they have formed. All right. Aristotle said it this way. We are what we repeatedly do. And so understand this. Who you are today has been largely shaped by your habits. Where you are today has been largely shaped by your habits. And the life that you're living right now has been largely shaped by the habits that you have embraced and put into work in your life. 
And that is why I just can't want to be different. I can't just wish to be different. I can't just hope to be different. It sounds spiritual, but it's self-defeating. Sometimes hoping is doing this. Well, I hope things change, but we put all of the work and all of the responsibility on someone else. This is what the scripture tells me, that my hope in Christ will never disappoint. All right, because he's enough. He's made the way and I need to walk in it. I need to be obedient. I need to adjust. I need to stop some things and start some things so that I'm on the road taking me to the right place. He's my hope. He's the bridge that takes me to a different place. And so hope in our lives is not, uh, it, it, it's, it's not non-responsive. Hope is responsive. I change the way I think so that I can do a different thing. If you want to change who you're becoming, if you're not happy with, with who you are, where you are, all right, change some habits. Change some of what you do. You want to change where you're going. Change some habits. Get on a different road mentally, emotionally, spiritually that's going to take you to a better place. If you want to change your life, change your habits. 1 Peter 4, 1 and 2 says, Since Jesus went through everything you're going through and more, learn to think like Him. Think of your suffering as a weaning from that old sinful habit of always expecting to get your way then you will be able to live out your days free to pursue what God wants instead of being tyrannized by what you want. First Assembly, listen, I believe that our best lies ahead. And I believe that the best for your life lies ahead. And I want to encourage you, I say this often, and I'm going to keep saying it, be a student of yourself. Look at your life. Where are you headed? What is your purpose? What is your focus? Does it line up with who God says you are? And if it does, stay steady and keep moving forward. And if something's amiss, if something's awry, don't beat yourself up. Listen, all that makes you is human, but don't stay there. What do I need to start? What do I need to stop? My hope is in Christ. And let's begin to build the bridge to the better place. And in Christ, you can do it. I love you, I bless you, and I pray that this week you will tell somebody about Jesus.